What's good, it's your girl Nate. What's my name? Imani P, aka Pusha P, aka Money P, aka Spitter P, aka Beetlejuice P. And welcome to my channel, Imani Versus, where I talk about music culture and more. And I'm from the DMV. I don't know why I forgot to say that. Sometimes I forget. Um, today, I've been wanting to do this video for a very, very long time because I have a question for you all. It is about the artist The Weeknd. Um, and I want to talk about, you know, a little bit about his background, how he got into the industry. And I wanted to ask an important question to the black community. Do you think The Weeknd forgot about his people? Okay, well, let me tell you what I mean when I say that, because I feel like y'all not understanding. Okay, so if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this video and this channel. Um, what else? Check out my Spotify at Imani Versus. Check out my music blog at coolnagain.blog. All the links are in the description below. For those of you who do not know The Weeknd is, or Abel Tesfaye, um, which sounds, sounds like a French last name. I mean, I'm guessing he's like from the continent of Africa, but I'll let you guys, we'll, we'll, we're gonna do this together. Cause I feel like I learned more about The Weeknd with me writing this outline out. And um, I feel like y'all don't know about The Weeknd like I know about The Weeknd, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I've always thought The Weeknd was biracial. I think Twitter told me that he was biracial. The Weeknd is actually Ethiopian. He's from Ethiopia, which is a country in East Africa, I believe. And they have good ass food and good ass music and good ass clothes. And that's all I know about Ethiopia. I would like to visit one day. <laughs> Whoever told me that he was biracial on Twitter, prison. So The Weeknd grew up in, I think, a two-parent household. He had like a, an older sibling. Um, his parents did separate and he was raised mostly by his grandmother and his mother. Uh, and that's where he learned Ambotic. It's a, there's like their um, native tongue. It's like how like Creole is or like Patois. That's what it's reminded me of. But that's the native language in um, Ethiopia. He did go to an Ethiopian Orthodox church. Um, and his father was not around after his parents separated. Um, so from what I read was after his parents separated, his father came around maybe when he was like nine. And then he came around again when he was like 12. But overall, his father like got remarried and had other kids and just kind of forgot about his first family which is like something that a lot of like people do and i feel like that's just not nice to do okay you want to separate from your wife cool don't ignore your children but so in his teen years the weekend did start using we're gonna call it like flowers we're gonna call it flowers and it it alters your mind every time you take a flower. So in his teens, the weekends are using flowers. Are you getting, are you catching my drip? Okay. <laughs> so he used to use like white flowers, um, purple flowers, um, pink flowers, and to try to get more flowers, he would shock lip off this, all the time. Um, I think that is when his addiction started um, as a teen, which is very sad. That's so young to be addicted to flowers. That's young. So um, after the week and graduated from high school, he did attend college. So I think he did two years at West Hill Collegiate Institute. And then he did another two years at Birchmont Park Institute. And he ended up dropping out in like 2007 and he moved to Parkdale, Toronto. So he does have somewhat of a, a higher education than high school, which is cool, like I'm glad. And I know in his household, if there's anything like any foreigner, like my own and just like everybody else, your parents make you go to college, there's no choice. I remember I tried not to go to college and my parents basically told me to pick out some schools and start applying like that end of the week. Um, so 
you know. Between 2009 and 2011, The Weeknd started dropping music under names like XOXOXO, um, The Noise, and Ken Can. And he posted three songs on the under the YouTube channel XOXOXO, XOXOXO, XO, you know? Um, um, those songs were What You Need, Lost Music, and The Morning. So the songs were R&B music, but they were pitched by a man named Curtis Santiago as dark R&B to Jeremy Rose. Um, so if you know The Weeknd, he first started off doing R&B music and then like started doing pop music, like the 80s, like flower pop music, you know what I mean? Flowers. Um, so he did end up um, posting the songs on YouTube. Um, fun fact, the songs were freestyled and rapped by The Weeknd over Rose, which is Jeremy Rose, the guy that Santiago pitched, you know, what type of sounds it is, um, over Rose's like production. So Jeremy Rose was The Weeknd's producer at the time. And then The Weeknd basically just went in the studio and rapped over his beats and sang over his beats. Cause The Weeknd used to rap early on as well. And it wasn't written down, it wasn't, it wasn't premeditated or nothing. He just went in there and talked about what was in his heart and who was probably on flowers as well. First of all, uh, smoking's bad. You shouldn't smoke. And uh, alcohol is bad. You shouldn't drink alcohol. And uh, as for drugs, well, drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Okay. Wait, Drake ended up finding him and then he got locked in the basement and then started writing songs for Drake and then The weekend's popular now. And that's the end of the video. Been intended, but do you feel the same? Lovers, late at night. I'm just playing, that's not what happened. So what actually happened was the weekend actually started getting noticed very quickly from only those three songs. He did not like grinds for people like Little Dirk for 10 years or like Little Baby for a couple years. Those three songs got really popular quickly um, through like different blogs picking him up. I think Drake did end up like finding him as well. Um, but it was mostly like different blogs at the time. And this is like the mid to early 2000s. So this is when like, bloggers and um music reviewers like these instagram wasn't popular so they're creating their own content so they actually went out and looked for these things instead of just picking up from people like me and like other people and screenshotting it and then posting it on their instagram yeah those were the days right also like i said before the weekend had different names the noise xoxoxo um, Ken Can, but how he came across the weekend, fun fact, was an experience from one of his best friends um, and creative director, um, Lamar Taylor. Um, so Lamar Taylor, he dropped out of high school when he was 17. And apparently he took his mattress and just left one weekend. And that's basically how he got his name. Like he just took his mattress and moved out of his parents' house and left one weekend and he just never came home. And these are the exact uh, words um, that he said. Now, Jeremy Rose, the producer, he has another story. And you'll hear Jeremy Rose's uh, name a lot as I speak about more of The Weeknd's background because it seems like him and The Weeknd low-key beef. I'm not sure who this man is to The Weeknd. I don't really know much about The Weeknd as well. But like they seem like they low key beef because he's always like kind of like trying to take credit for the weekend like being popular. Oh no, he did it over my beat. Oh no, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, you know what I mean? You know people that like come in the end, and now they all of a sudden like your bestie. Like it's it's giving that type of vibe. But um yeah, so he got the song um the name. He got the name from his best friend Lamar Taylor. Um but they took the end. Like, you know how it's spelled week and D instead of E-N-D because there was a a rock band out. I don't know who you guys know The Weeknd. Um, they took the E out because that rock band already had The Weeknd. And then they didn't want to get copyrighted. But anyway, that was between 2007 and 2011. He got popular for those three songs and he did get signed to XO and released his debut album, which is called House of Balloons, which got a lot of critical acclaim. A lot of people liked it. A lot of folks like it. I'm not folks, but you know, a lot of other folks liked it. Um, 
He also released a second mixtape called Thursday and then a third one called Echoes of Silence. Um, he did get a lot of awards from these like mixtapes and uh, he's still in Canada at the time. He wasn't like an international superstar like he is now. He was still in Canada. He got a lot of awards, a lot of performances. He got a lot of tours. And from there, that's how he actually meets Drake. So Drake already heard about him from his music prior and was silently, I guess, just following him, being a fan of him. And so he met Drake at one of his shows for the, um, like the Toronto something festival. He met Drake there and Drake asked him to come on the OVO festival. And if you don't know who OVO is, that's like Drake's like record label, I believe. And it's like an owl. It's like O-V-V-O. It's kind of like that. So he starts opening for OVO and the OVO festival in 2011. And then he ends up collabing with Drake on a song called Crew Love in 2015. And that's when I found out who The Weeknd was. We took with Drake's song Crew Love and then he had a song called Or Not with like title or sign and like the Wiz Khalifa and all of them. But basically that's how he got more popular, got more mainstream. Drake kind of like gave him a push. Not a push, but like he was a fan of The Weeknd and he really liked The Weeknd's music and his voice and he wanted to collab with him really bad. And you know, The Weeknd not gonna say no. It's Drake, he's the hottest rapper out right now. He rapping and singing. Let me get on a song. You feel me? <laughs> so after this, um, Drake, not Drake. They both kind of look the same, did they not? Comment below, they look the same. Anyway, The Weeknd actually ends up dropping his debut album, Kiss Land, and then he drops Beauty Behind the Madness. He drops Starboy. That's the album I know more about. Um, After Hours, and then recently he dropped Dawn FM, which is the album that Gunna actually beat him out on in the number one spot. We'll get there at the end. Um, so that's like basically how The Weeknd came up. You know, it, I feel like he got really lucky with how he came up. I feel like a lot of people work years to get put on like two chains and little dirk and um who's who else like nba young boy like i feel like people spend years in the weekend i guess it was just a different time back in the day people authentically finding music and finding the next best thing versus nowadays everything is just like numbers and what's popular or whatever anyway the weekend really got lucky because to get popular basically off of three songs and you get signed and you meet Drake and then you're on an awesome album with Drake's. Uh, I think it was the album when he was like looking like this. It was that album, like what a blessing. So I hope he knows that that's truly a blessing and he could not have done that now. Like literally, music is oversaturated right now. Everyone, it's just like, I feel like I'm so over it. Hey, back in 2013, um, The Weeknd does talk about his issue with flowers um, and how he at some point felt like that he needed to be on pink flowers in order to write music and sing and do all that stuff. Um, I feel like everybody, I mean, I don't understand that type of lifestyle. That's not me. I don't know nothing about that lifestyle. Whatever y'all got going on, because that's not me. But, you know, I'm glad he was opened up about it because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about it too much. I feel like if you see more popular people talking about it, then more people will see that, you know, they have a problem and they should go actually get some help. Ah, 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 whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. You know what I mean? I also forgot to mention that some of the weekend's like musical influences is Prince, Michael Jackson, Robert Kelly, and Asher Awake. K, who is an Ethiopian singer, which I think that's really cool as well. Um, I can see a little bit of Prince and when it comes to like the high pitched like soprano voice. And then, you know, the Robert Kelly, I guess with like just the toxic like R&B music, you know? He does represent like dark R&B and a lot of people will even consider that trap soul. And if you wanna even see my video about trap soul, um, yeah, I made a video, link in the description below. <laughs> um, but m like the question I asked y'all earlier, do you think like The Weeknd kind of forgot about his people? Cause you know, it seemed like he got on, you know, with Drake, you know, doing the R&B thing. A lot of the black men and women were supporting him. And then he just kind of left and started doing pop music, which is fine. But I, I think, 
and the time he did that he did forget to cater to his original community um his original fan base which were mostly like black people and personally i would say yes he did forget about his original fan base and the black community when he did that because i feel like i heard the weekend more when he was doing r&b music because that's mostly what i hear on their black stations like r&b music and i don't hear him as much now as he's doing pop music because you know that's a different demographic you know more different colors these colors listen to that music so i do think in a sense he did forget it i mean pop music is where the money is at that's why Ariana Grande does pop music and that does, doesn't do like Broadway or R&B or whatever because that is where the money is at. But I feel like you can do pop music, you can transition all you want, but leave some songs on there for your original fan base. Don't forget about them so hard. I feel like a lot of artists do that. They, you know, find their like niche in like the genre of music and they stay there for albums and albums and albums and lose their original fan base but then get a, a broader one and then when they're tired of doing that niche they want to try to come back and do the original one and it's kind of like your original fan base is like no get away from me you left me back in 2015 have fun with your new fan base and do that pop music um i also think recently so the weekend had like some issues with like the grammys because they never um they will never nominate him for doing pop music categories they always say he did r b and we know the grammys be doing that the low-key like just emphasize like you know the discrimination against black and brown people so i think they were doing that on purpose just to be mean um because his albums are pop music like how they be putting doja cat in r b it's pop she's doing pop she's doing pop rap it's not r&b like the brain use i think his arguments with the grammy with the um like the grammy boards and the fact that hip-hop and r not hard r&b hip-hop and pop rap which is pop rap is like a doja cat and then hip-hop is like um like a megan the stallion or a little baby or um a pop smoke he does drill but you know what hip-hop um i feel like that being more popular nowadays versus like pop music is the reason why the weekend did not get the number one album he also did not do good promotion for it um i did see him complain about how he just came out for like one week and was like yeah i'm dropping an album and then dropped the album a week later you're not beyonce the weekend i know you think you're beyonce because all these accolades and things you're done you're not beyonce you can't surprise us with an album and then think you're gonna get a number one spot you need to still work you don't have that type of fan base to do that does that make sense like he has a big fan base but not a beyonce fan base or like a Nicki minaj fan base like Nicki minaj could drop an album today and her album will actually probably go number one because she has that type of core fan base with her fans so i really think that's why the weekend today score number one i'm glad he didn't throw a fit like dj Khaled did when tyler the creator got number one album and he didn't i thought that was so like whack it was so whack and um yes anyway what do y'all think um i hope i ran through that you know information about the weekend pretty well i learned a lot of new things about him like he's not biracial he's ethiopian y'all be lying too much and you know comment below about how you feel about him transitioning from r&b to pop and what's your favorite weekend song i like the song star boy that's it i don't really listen to him i don't really like his voice Ugh. and it, when he's saying at the super bowl it proved as to why i didn't like his voice it's not that good i feel like he just got lucky and got put on at the right time at the right moment i don't think he i don't th i feel like if it was nowadays he wouldn't have been popular but you know y'all let me know um i think that's it I'll see y'all real soon because I'm that girl. Especially when I'm sober, I won't.